Hello everyone, I'm the Lumble Humberjack, and today we're playing Minecraft, but it's not just any Minecraft. No, we are in the Redstone world. Now, if you've been playing Minecraft for a while and spent any time looking into Minecraft Redstone, you've probably heard of the Monostable Circuit. It sounds scary, but it's really not. And today we're going to look at 10 different Monostable Circuits that you can use in Minecraft. Now, the last one might surprise you, so make sure that you stick around till the end. Let's get started. So what is a monostable circuit? Well, a circuit is monostable if it has only one stable output. So in this case, we see that the stable output is unpowered. And if we come over here and we hit this button, it will briefly power before returning to its stable state, which is unpowered. So no matter how many times we power this, it's going to briefly react to our input, but then it's going to return to the stable state. And so that's what we mean by a monostable circuit, one stable output. Now, when someone says monostable circuit in Minecraft, they usually refer to something like what's behind me. Uh, this is called a pulse generator, and it's also a pulse limiter. And those are the two most common things that people mean when they say monostable circuit, but we're gonna look at a couple of other things today. This one in particular is known as the circuit breaker pulse generator. And as we just saw, any time that we feed it a redstone signal, it will generate a one tick pulse that will go off and do one tick pulse things. And we can actually increase the length of that pulse by increasing the delay of this repeater, which will increase the delay required before we get a signal, but it will also lengthen that pulse to whatever we set that repeater to. Another kind of pulse generator that we might care about is something like this. Uh, we're gonna have a button here that powers a block and powers the redstone without any delay because there are no repeaters, and it'll turn on this light. But at the same time, we're gonna extend the sticky piston that pushes the opaque block, and it's gonna cut that on. So we see, ah, we immediately light up the light when we hit the button, but the piston pushes the block and it cuts the redstone signal off. And so we turn whatever signal length we have here into a one tick length pulse. But this one doesn't have any delay. Now, in contrast to the previous two, you could have the stable output of your circuit be powered. And in this case, when we hit this button, it's gonna turn off this torch, which is gonna turn on this torch, but that's gonna happen one tick later. So there's gonna be one tick in which this line is going to be unpowered. And so we see that the piston is going to briefly detract and then extend again which means that we've generated a one pulse tick of an unpowered state. We call this sort of thing an off pulse generator. Pulse length limiters. Now this device is gonna take a long redstone signal and it's gonna cut it short on the other side. So if we receive any length of pulse on this side, it's gonna power this repeater, which transfers power through the opaque block to the other side. But this other repeater is gonna power the piston, which pushes the opaque block out of the way and it ends up cutting everything short. And so we have whatever length of pulse coming in from the right is going to be cut down to one tick on the left. And this is very similar to the other ones that we've looked at so far, the pulse length generators, and, and they kind of work on the same principles. But now let's think about some other kinds of monostable circuits. Pulse extenders. Because sometimes you want to extend the length of a pulse instead of limit it. So right now we've got this stone button and it's going to light up a light for a certain amount of time based on how long the stone button produces power for. But let's say that we want to extend that pulse. Well, we've got this line of redstone that runs parallel to our circuit and a bunch of repeaters all lined up on four tick uh, delay here, each going into opaque blocks. So every time that this repeater gets powered and powers this opaque block, we're going to get a redstone signal that comes out the side and continues to extend the length of our pulse. So if we look at what happens when we turn this on, we see that the light above the stone button turns off well before the light at the end of the circuit, because we've taken the pulse from the stone button and we have extended it using this repeater line pulse extender. And now you can configure this to, well, any size, as long as you have the repeaters that you need. The way that I have this one set up, the circuit delay is zero ticks, and it's going to extend the pulse however many ticks you have the repeaters set to. 
the Hopper Clock Pulse Extender. So if you've ever seen a hopper clock before, you've got sticky pistons that push the redstone block back and forth depending on how many items are in this hopper. But if you replace one of the sticky pistons with a regular piston so that it only moves the block back whenever you fire off a redstone pulse, we get something like this. So we turn the clock on and the items begin flowing between the hoppers, but because that piston on the left isn't a sticky piston, it waits until we fire a signal at the input again. So what we see here is, ah, now we can extend a pulse length here by giving a pulse over on the right. It'll turn on the light on the left and it will stay on depending on how many items we have inside of our hopper clock. Pulse multipliers are going to be used to turn one input pulse into multiple outputs. So we see here, we're gonna get one input pulse from the stone button, which is going to flow through the circuit. And we're going to actually get two output pulses because our output is this dispenser. We're going to power it once from this side and then after a delay, once from the other side. And what that's going to let us do is quickly dispense and retract a bucket of lava. And you could do this with water as well. And you could do this say to quickly break a portal to the nether or something. But this is the basic idea of pulse multipliers. We want to take one pulse and turn them into more. Another way to make a pulse multiplier is to toggle a clock on and off. Right here we've got a basic redstone clock that's going to fire this note block every time the clock goes off, but the clock is only going to be able to run as long as we are getting an input pulse. And so we see as long as that button is providing power to the redstone above it, the clock is going and it fires off the note block. And in that way, this is a pulse multiplier. If you want to extend the number of times that that block fires, you just need to extend the length of the pulse. Pulse dividers produce an output pulse after a specific number of input pulses. So what we see here is that if we hit the stone button, we get an output pulse. But now the blocks are in a different configuration. If we hit the button again, we don't get an output pulse. In fact, if we hit it two more times, we still don't get an output pulse. But now the fifth time that we hit it, we get an output pulse. So what this means is that we're going to get an output pulse every four times that we pass a pulse into the circuit. So it's going to pass through and light up the lamp, and then it's going to be dead for three uh, three pulses, and then the next one after that is going to light up the lamp. And this is tileable outwards, and it's based on binary, but the idea behind pulse dividers is that we only want to allow a pulse through given a specific number of input pulses. And this is one way, although kind of loud, that we can achieve that. And last but not least, we have the block update detector, otherwise known as the observer. Yeah, so that's right. This is actually a monostable circuit. Look, the output is stable, right? It's stable, unpowered. And if we do anything in front of it, we force a block to update or change state in front of it, we'll get an output signal, and then it will return to its stable, unpowered state. And so in this way, uh, Minecraft actually gave us a, a small, compact, one block solution to this idea. We've got a monostable circuit built into Minecraft, right? It's got an unpowered stable output, and anytime you feed it information by giving it something to observe in front of it, it produces a signal and then returns back to its stable output. So this is actually a monostable circuit in of itself, the Minecraft Observer. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hope you had a good time. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and, you know, check me out on YouTube or Twitch. I live stream sometimes. It's pretty fun. We most recently did a Vault Hunters live stream. It was pretty great. So come on by and, you know, stay up to date on notifications. Thanks for coming by. Have a great day. Goodbye.